Are you tired of Serato 3.0 constantly crashing, glitching, and stopping your audio mid-set? Are you ready to throw your laptop out the window out of pure frustration? Or maybe just take a hammer to it? Well, don't worry, because in this video, we found out a way you can stop that from happening. What's up, guys? This is John Devine, and today, we're doing a follow-up video. Two weeks ago, I posted a video talking about some of my experiences using Serato 3.0 on live gigs. And if you haven't had the chance, you can check it out a little later on my page so you can see some of the major struggles I was having. But to save some time, I spoke about dropouts, hardware disconnection, and more, which was causing the music to randomly stop. And I don't know about you, but I personally loved it. I mean, who wants a boring DJ set without a little excitement and chaos thrown in? I mean, because there's nothing like pretending that the technical difficulties are part of the performance. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah, yeah, I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. Look, we all want stable and reliable software to work with, and after a crazy amount of research, reading articles and researching solutions, I said, screw it, I'm gonna ask the YouTube community. And from all of your comments, I could tell I wasn't the only one experiencing these issues. After reading and speaking with a ton of people in the comment section, I noticed that a majority of the people with the same style of computer as me working with high-end equipment were still having issues. This included audio dropouts, computers freezing, and even glitchy waveforms. And after reading all of this, I couldn't help but think, like, are we on Serato's naughty list or something? Like, do they not like us anymore? You're on the naughty list. No, oh, no. Now, before you get too upset, hold on. Well, the answer's no because I took it out for another event on December 23rd, making sure I had plenty of backups prepared just in case this problem arose again. I also like to live dangerously. Luckily on this event, there were no dropouts, but a little bit of waveform lag. And during my sets, I had been tweeting my experiences in real time, talking about my CPU power, log information, and more. I must have done it well enough because I was able to get Serato's attention and they had reached out to me personally to tell me to send them some of the info. And I was so relieved that I was going to get the professionals to help me fix the situation. I felt like the dude who kind of accidentally clogged his toilet in the middle of the night while he was taking a massive dump and didn't want to wake the wife because she'd just yell at him for eating too much Wendy's. I was working with Marcus from Serato and they wanted me to send over some specs, logs, and other technical mumbo jumbo I didn't know how to read myself. Once I sent it over, I thought to myself, finally, I'm gonna get some answers. And after sending my first spec email, I was just sitting there waiting, refreshing my inbox every two minutes like a crazy person. I kinda felt like a cat waiting for a can of tuna to just magically show up in his food bowl. Luckily, after a few hours, Marcus responded, and I couldn't wait to hear what was going wrong and the complexity of the issues that are causing my good old reliable Serato to keep crashing on job. I clicked the email, read the lovely welcome gesture, and there it was, the answer to all of my questions. I hadn't restarted my MacBook Pro in nearly 30 days. After sending my specs over to Serato, they quickly pointed out that my system had been running non-stop for quite some time. Uh, I was shocked because I never do this, but I've also been in super busy season with editing content and working events, so I probably just didn't realize what I was doing. The second thing was to check my USB-C connections and the inputs. So I did some air spraying, dusting, and proper maintenance to guarantee that my connections were flawless. Next, I opened up the activity monitor and checked what apps were eating up my RAM usage. And this is where I think I had found the biggest issue. You see, if you haven't heard, Serato 3.0 requires a ton of RAM power, putting a good amount of strain on your computer's ability to multitask. When I opened up my activity monitor, I didn't realize I was already using close to eight gigs of RAM in the background with some of my apps and other functions. Some of the biggest culprits were Spotlight, Dropbox, and to my surprise, Creative Cloud by Adobe. See, I used Photoshop and Lightroom and other Adobe products to work on my laptop when I'm on the go. What I didn't know is that the Creative Cloud hosts those apps on your computer, which require it to run in the background and use nearly 1.5 gigs of RAM power. 
I have 16 gigs of RAM on this MacBook Pro. So typically I didn't think this would be a big deal, but when I launched Serato 3.0 and ran some tests, I noticed it was pulling 60 gigs of RAM while using it on the hardware. Yeah. And this was practically pushing my processors to the limit. With some further investigation, I noticed that if I added Google Chrome with two to four tabs open, I would lose an additional one gig of RAM. So it's safe to say the immediate thought was, ah, well, I'm exceeding my RAM, duh. But I'm not done just yet. I thought to myself, well, this computer is a beast and has never given me problems before. So what's the big deal now? And simply put, it's because Serato's processing requires separating the stems in real time, causing the machine to work four times harder every time a track is uploaded into a deck. Also, the bigger the music file, the harder it has to work. So if you're using pre-made mixes, such as piss breaks or cocktail mixes, that could put strain on your processing through Serato. My first fix was to remove any and all apps on my computer that are using RAM in the background. I also went ahead and followed steps to optimize performance through Serato's website, and one of the big ones I didn't realize I had checked was the Analyze Stems on Dex Load. This makes your computer analyze the stems as soon as it's loaded onto your deck, making it harder on your computer to operate. Now, when turned off, the computer will only analyze the stems when activating the stems itself. Putting it all together, I started noticing that my computer was running smoother, my CPU was working more efficiently, and the RAM wasn't taking up as much space. Ultimately, I went from using nearly 15 gigs of RAM to now only using 10 to 11 gigs with Serato. I went back to my studio and decided to chuck a couple of Red Bulls while putting the machine to the test. I DJed in my room alone, like I always am, for two and a half hours, making sure I pushed the limits of the stems to guarantee I wouldn't have further issues. To my happiness, no problems. Now I will say this, although I'm happy I got this fixed, I am slightly bummed out that this heavy duty machine is only gonna be used for DJing from now on. As a business owner and content creator, I'm constantly on the go and the computer was just a workhorse for me. Obviously the luxury of having only one computer is futile with today's technology because even though the computers do get better, so do the apps and softwares. At the end of the day, I'm happy to say that I got Serato working beautifully and I hope that some of these steps can help fix the issues that you guys are having as well. And hey, if you wanna see how well it's working on my computer, just check out this video right here. You'll see some of my waveforms and mix quality. As always, if you found this video helpful, please drop a like and consider subscribing. I'm really trying to bring a lot of content to this channel and ultimately, I think I can provide a massive amount of value to anyone who decides to subscribe and give me a chance in 2023. As always, keep learning, keep growing, and keep rocking out. See you next time, peace.